Well, good morning to everybody. Happy Sunday and a happy Memorial Day weekend. We would just want to take a moment to I just think about all those who have given their lives to fight for the freedoms we have, fight for the country that we live in. And that's what really Memorial Day is. Memorializing is those who have fought and those who have um, been in battle for our freedom. And obviously, it uh, it's kind of a, a picture of what Christ has done for us. And so I think we can remember Christ. We can remember Christ every day, but we can remember him. He didn't die and stay dead, but he rose again from the, from the dead. And you know, Memorial Day is also a time to uh, be somber about uh, those who have have passed and and been um, in our in our place pretty much to to win our freedom and so I hope you have a wonderful day and are able to just take a little bit of time to reflect and thank God for what we do have and those who have gone before us. You may know somebody who <clears throat> excuse me who has given their life um, in in the military and in battle. Uh, you may not, but even if you don't, I just encourage you to uh, honor today and this weekend um, as a as a time of reflection, but also enjoy it with family. You know, obviously, I think most times when we're thinking and reflecting, it's also awesome to do that with family and friends and do it even in a jovial, uh, joyful way that is not just always serious. And so obviously we do barbecues and all that, but just wanted to encourage you in that. Uh, before we get started today, happy Memorial Day weekend. Um, if you're watching today, just let us know. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Maybe you're on a uh, vacation. <clears throat> Maybe you're away for the weekend. Let us know if you're in Hawaii or in the Bahamas, somewhere awesome, and we will celebrate with you and be jealous um, that you're there. But wanted to open up with prayer as usual and then get into our message today. So Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that we can set aside this time to meet online together, but to ultimately meet with you, Lord God. Our heart and our desire is that we would have an encounter with you. Whether we sense that right now today or whether we maybe think upon the words that are spoken today, maybe later in the week, and we have an encounter with you. I pray that you would fill us with strength. I pray that you'd fill us with courage. I pray, God, that you would cause us to set our eyes and our hearts and our desires on you, God. Everything in our life belongs to you, God. You went to the cross and died for us to set us free, to give us ultimate freedom, which is salvation and forgiveness of sins and freedom from hell, God. And so we thank you for that. And we're grateful for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why don't you just take a moment and just say, God, I'm grateful for this day. I'm thankful for today. You might have had a hard week. You might have had a hard yesterday. You might have had a tough morning getting up. Or maybe something tough happened just a few minutes ago maybe an argument, maybe some stress points for you, whatever it may be, just, just take a moment, maybe right now, just within your heart, within maybe even you say it out loud, but Lord, thank you for today. Come on, today's a gift. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. And so we thank God for this moment. And today I wanted to talk about a, um, <clears throat> or teach on, preach on, we're not just talking, but we can call it a talk. Some people um, have have deemed preaching a talk. And I think there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Um, but I want us to turn to 2 Chronicles. That is not in the Bible. 2 Chronicles is in the Bible. 15 verse 7. And it's a really simple verse. But I want to look at it today in, in a deeper way. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 15, 17 says, But you, I was saying, but you be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. That's the New King James Version. And 
Do not let your hands be weak. This phrase is used for someone who's finding their, their, um, that their courage is sinking or slipping away. And I don't know if you've ever been in a spot where you feel like your courage was sinking or slipping away. It might have been in a, a scenario. It might have been in a season of life. It might be right now, but whatever the case, I want to encourage us today to not allow our courage to sink or slip away. It might be because of the um, atmosphere of politics. It might be because of uh, what's going on in the world today. It, it might have you might have lost your courage during the whole uh, COVID pandemic. You may have lost your courage to to continue to be a light and to go anywhere and to be. Uh, places and and you got afraid because of maybe mandates and different things to continue to do that even to this day maybe you're hanging on to some of those fears and those those doubts maybe your courage is is sinking and slipping away because you're having a tough time in a relationship maybe a tough time in your marriage maybe a tough time with your kids Maybe you lost an opportunity that you thought was for you and you had to step away from that or, or the door closed and you, you feel like your, your courage and your, your strength is slipping away. Well, I want to encourage us today to be of good courage and to, to take, take heart and to not allow what God means for his purposes to be stolen away for, from, from fear or from doubt or from anxiety or from lack of courage. Other translations of this verse say, let not your hand be weak or slack. Another, I'll read a couple more of them. It says, be strong and do not lose courage. Let your hands, don't let your hands drop. It says, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Another version, but you, but, but be you, relax, not your efforts, for your work will be, sorry, but, but be you strong. Sorry, it's an it's a old English writing, but be you strong. Sounds kind of backwards. Relax not your efforts, for your work will be rewarded. Courage, just a quick definition, is the quality of mind that meets danger or opposition with calmness and firmness. When was the last time you had something kind of crazy, opposition, something that seemed dangerous, and you were just calm and firm? It's it's kind of a, a unique mix because you don't want to be, um, when something's dangerous, especially for, for like a child or something, you don't want to be, um, so calm that you don't rescue them out of the danger. Just, oh, they, oh, they got it. They'll be fine sitting in the middle of the street. No, you want to be firm, but you want to have a calmness that doesn't get so out of out of sorts that you you are unable to act because if you don't have that certain amount of calmness you're you're gonna maybe react in a wrong way and so we have to have a a courage that can face danger can face opposition with a calmness but a firmness in knowing that we are unshaken in the face of danger and some synonyms Getting back to some grammar school, synonyms to uh, courage are boldness, bravery, daring, fearlessness, fortitude, resolution, and valor. And I think, you know, sometimes we can look at our personality and say, well, I'm not really a bold person. I'm not really a brave person or daring or fearless. But you might have fortitude. You might have resolution. You, you may be really resolute in some of the truth that you've you've acquired over the years through the word of God and you're resolute in that, or you have fortitude, you have strength, you have valor, you're, you're, you're not going to fold under pressure. 
But I, I believe we can all have an amount of boldness. The Bible says we can be filled with boldness when we're filled with the Spirit. That's what happened in the book of Acts is that they were in the upper room and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they went out boldly to preach the gospel everywhere they went. It wasn't a boldness that they possessed, but a boldness that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> began to um, indwell in them. And here's some antonyms of of uh, courage, which mean the opposite, anti, antonyms, <clears throat> cowardice, faint-heartedness, timidity, terror, dread, and fear. Now, my heart today is that if there's any cowardice, faint-heartedness, timidity, terror, dread, or fear in us, that it would not be a, a feeling of condemnation or a feeling of, oh, that's just how I've always been. I've kind of been a coward. I've kind of been timid. I'm kind of dread, dread certain things or fearful or, you know, faint hearted and different things. I don't want us to look at it as, oh, that's weaknesses that I may never overcome. I want us to look at that as weaknesses that we can actually bring to to the cross that we can bring to Jesus and find courage and boldness and strength in him. <clears throat> Cause over and over again in the scripture, God's people were called and are called to be people of courage. And that's because there's so many things that can cause our hands to become weak and to tremble and to be fearful. When you really kind of look at certain places in the Bible where people of God are, are exhorted to take courage, you realize that there's some common situations involved that, that we all face in our journey <clears throat> and that we have to rise up and take hold of the will of God for our lives and realize that it takes courage. It takes a courage beyond sometimes what we can muster up just on our own strength. But I want to look at, at some scenarios, and you may be familiar with some of these as we go through them if you've been in church or, or heard sermons about <clears throat> courage. Sorry, <clears throat> need a little water here. <clears throat> ah, the source of life. Well, God is the source of life, but water is good. So there's certain, certain situations, I think, in all of our lives that courage can be um, hard to keep up, so to speak. Maybe in the past you've had scenarios where it, it seems like your courage started sinking or disappearing in certain uh, situations. And I just want to share too, kind of like some of these are, are, are personally areas that I, I want to work on. And the first one I want to look at is when you step into like a new opportunity, a new area of responsibility. And this is something that Joshua faced when he took over uh, for Moses. He took over leading the people of Israel. And imagine what that must have been like. There, there were at this point hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million people that were walking through the desert Moses had been the voice of God to these people, the, the, the oracle of God to these people. And Joshua is now taking a step in and you don't see <clears throat> a whole lot of, of it, at least written in the Bible. You see a little bit of it, of, of preparation for Joshua to take um, Moses' spot. But God did not want Joshua to be a second Moses. He wanted him to be Joshua, who he had created, because there was now different responsibilities and different tasks at hand. God used Moses to prepare the people for the promised land. And now Joshua was prepared and was built to actually take the promised land through battles, through fights, through facing enemies. And so it took a different kind of tenacity, not, not a lesser or 
weaker kind of tenacity than Moses had. Moses had to seek God tenaciously. He had to uh, challenge the people tenaciously. He had to lead the people. And now Joshua is faced with some of those similar things, but now he has to physically fight to take the promised land. But God reassures him in this time where he's going to take this new responsibility on. And I don't know if you've ever felt timid when you've taken on new responsibility at your job or, or when you first became a parent or when you first got married, you maybe had a little bit of, of, of timidity of like, oh, wow, I'm taking on not just this great new season, but wow, there's a lot of responsibility with this. I'm now responsible for another person. I'm now responsible for this team of people at my job, or I'm now responsible for the results that need to happen. And how am I going to do this? But thank God for the open door, but this is a lot. And so God reassures Joshua before Moses departs. And so before he takes on this full responsibility, God gives him a word. He says, be strong and have good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave or forsake you. And that's in Deuteronomy 31.6. And then God comes to him again after Moses departs in Joshua 1, 2 through 9, where he tells him three times to be strong and courageous. And I want to read Joshua 1, 9. It says, have, not, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. He's not going to leave you because you're in a certain place you don't think you should be. Wherever you go, he's going to be with you. He's going to go with you. You know, there's times in our life where, where I think we're, we're faced with projects, whether personal or vocational or whatever it might look like for, for our family, for friends, for coworkers, whatever it may be. But we have to take on a large project, so to speak. And where I, where I want to look at this is when Solomon became king, he was faced with a huge project. Not only was he following in the footsteps of the greatest king that had ever lived, which was David, uh, he was given now this task or project to build the greatest temple that possibly had ever been built up to that time and even I mean people still are amazed at Solomon's temple and, and how it was built and what it was built with and the materials that it was built with and in first chronicles 28 20 and you may be facing maybe a big project that you're looking at and saying how am I going to do this God I I don't know if I can accomplish this task I don't know if I can accomplish this this thing that you've put before me but I want to read this and hopefully <clears throat> it's encouragement to you to have courage as you step into this um, undertaking. And it says, and David said to his son Solomon, be strong and of good courage. Seems like a repeating theme that the Lord gave to people who were facing new responsibilities, new projects, big challenges. Be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God, my God, will be with you. So this is David speaking to his son. The Lord, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. That's First Chronicles 28, 20. And it's interesting <clears throat> that he says, be strong and of good courage and do it. 
He didn't say you have to do it perfectly. He said, just do it. Just step out and, and start. And so often I've seen in my life, and maybe you've seen this in yours, that I've, I've waited and, and been timid at times to maybe step out and do something because I was afraid the first step I would just fail or that step eight I would fail and, and I hadn't even taken the, the first step. But, but then you take the first step and you realize, oh, step one helped me get to step two and I learned some things along the way and now I learned enough to now take step three. And, and it's kind of like even when you're in a, in a scenario with job training, you think like, man, I don't know how this training's going to go or I don't know how I'm going to fit it in or I don't know how life's going to be as, as I'm doing this training. But you just take the steps and all of a sudden you, you start to accomplish all that was put before you because you took it step at a time. Line upon line, precept upon precept, glory to glory. We, we grow step by step. And so we have to start to break things down to a step by step mentality and just do it. Just step out. Just start the project. And then learn things as you go. If you run into a wall, watch YouTube to figure it out. No, I'm joking. But there's, there's processes to to get to the next step and no one ever has it all figured out before they start that you hear it all the time business people or um you know real estate developers especially when they started their first project it was i had to learn as i went and i'm still learning as i go there's never a scenario where we know everything about a certain project or subject but we learn as we go and we're lifelong learners and that's okay. We don't have to be perfect. And if we fail or mess up, we do better the next time or we figure out maybe this isn't the path for me and there's a different path. And so we really have nothing to lose. So we have courage because we can step out in faith and what God has put before us to accomplish great things. The third thing I want to look at today is to have courage when you seem outnumbered. And specifically, we're going to look at uh, Joshua 10. And I'll just kind of read a, a summary of what it kind of looks like when we seem to be outnumbered. In Joshua 10, we have the people of God facing conflict with five kings. So they're outnumbered five to one. They have an enemy and it's five kingdoms against them. So they're outnumbered five to one. They were facing a conflict with five kings of the Amorites. And if that's not enough, they they hate them. They're, they're, they literally hate them. So Joshua is now trying to do what God's called him to do, to take the promised land. But there are five enemies, obstacles in the path. And I'm sure he sat back and thought, like God encouraged me so much to be strong and courageous. I thought this was going to be easy. I thought the path that he put me on was going to be easier than this. And I know for a fact We all have thought this, like, God, why isn't this easier? Why isn't this coming together the way I want it to? Why, you you said I would be strong and courageous. Why are you taking away my courage by making things hard? Well, sometimes problems come. Sometimes they seem to come in, in batches, like five at a time, 10 at a time. But as as Joshua moved and advanced towards the enemy, God speaks to him in Joshua 10 verse 8 and says, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. So it was as he progressed, as he took steps, as he advanced towards the enemy, because God had told them to take the land. He had promised this to them. 
he could stand on that. And as they move forward, and this is something that is challenging for all of us, many times it's not till we take the step of faith that God speaks confirmation. Sometimes it's, it's right in the middle of like right when we're about ready to clash with the opposition. God speaks, do not fear them, for I've delivered them into your hand. Not one of them shall stand before you. So Joshua took steps in advancement in obedience. And the enemy began to run. God rained down large hailstones down on the enemy and he caused the sun to stand still a miracle that none of us could ever imagine but the sun stood still at joshua's request so that they could finish the fight and finish the job that was before him verse 14 in joshua 10 says and there was there has been no day like that before it or after it that the Lord heeded the voice of man for the Lord fought for Israel. Never before and never again has the sun stood still at the request of a man. But God had special favor upon Joshua as he stepped out in obedience. Even though he was outnumbered, God did miraculous things. And I wonder if we would be so bold as to just continue to obey. Just continue to obey the voice of the Lord if he would come through miraculously. I think yes, because we've probably seen it before. I've seen it in my life. I know others have seen it who are are part of a live church. And I know you can see it for your life because God is not a respecter of persons. He works in ways that he meets his people where they're at. And it doesn't mean it'll be easy. It doesn't mean it will be uh, cookies and cream and floating down the stream. That just rhymes and I just made that up. That's a new new saying. Cookies and cream and floating down the stream. Ah, Write that down. Um, But the interesting thing is that sometimes we're going to experience our greatest days in the face of our greatest days oppositions because God's on our side and if we are one and we're outnumbered but we have God one with God no matter what the opposition looks like is always the majority it's not a fair fight when we have God on our side because he is supreme he is ultimate he is everything And I just want to read this in Joshua 10. I'm turning to that right now. Joshua 10, uh, 24 through 25. It says, And when they brought those kings out to Joshua, Joshua summoned all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who had gone with him, Come near. Put your feet on the necks of these kings. Then they came near and put their feet on their necks. And Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid or dismayed. Be strong and courageous, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterwards Joshua struck them and put them to death. And he hanged them on five trees. And it's, a, it's an intense portion of scripture there, but I wanted to read that because that's a promise of what God will do to all our enemies. It says, do not be afraid or dismayed, be courageous, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. He'll put them on the ground. He'll step on their necks and he'll eliminate them. He'll show them that he is all powerful, that he is the one who fights for us. And so in that realization, we can be strong and courageous and know 
that he is fighting for us, that he has won the battle, that nothing can stand against him. And so if our faith and our trust is in him, our courage can grow and grow step by step, not sink or not waver and not uh, dissipate, but it can be developed. And so this for me too is something I want to see in my life. I want to be, I want to be growing in courage. I want to be growing in, in strength in the Lord. I want to be growing and not allowing my hands to become weak or feeble or, or, or scared or cowardice. I want to be bold. I want to be brave, more daring, fearless, have resolution and valor. Come on, we want to be those type of people in the kingdom of God. Not just those who kind of who kind of just skated by, but those who conquered, those who went after all that God has for us. And I'm not saying go like apply this to your uh, dreams that aren't lined up with what God has for your life. I'm saying put this before the Lord and say, Lord, what is it that you've put before me that's not going to be necessarily easy, but that you are giving me courage to accomplish, that you're giving me courage to fight and to overcome and to have courage in this season. Let me pray for us today. Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your spirit that fills us with boldness and courage. God, we pray that we would be strong and courageous and we would not be discouraged. We would not lose heart, God, but we would stand firm and we would say, Lord, here we are. Mold us, shape us, grow us in the areas that we need to grow so that we could be strong and courageous in this time and season in our lives. I pray you would uh, intervene in scenarios that people need you to intervene. I pray you would give confirmation in areas where they need confirmation as they've advanced by faith that they would know that you are going with them and you're fighting for them. And Jesus, we pray for the miraculous to take place. Show your favor over us. Open doors, God, that we never thought would open. Open provision that we never thought would open. God, we give you our all today by faith, saying, Lord, we're yours. We know you are ultimate. You are supreme. And God, we find our strength and courage in you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, before we go, just wanted to uh, encourage you, if this was encouraging or strengthening to you at all, just hit hit the like, uh, the thumb button down there. Uh, share this out to friends, family, whoever you can. I've, I've been talking to someone who has shared every message that we have um, that we have put on YouTube. Has shared it every every week, and I'm just so thankful for that. That's that's one person who's doing that, who's done that for now several. Uh, weeks for for now a couple years now and just think if we all did that how many how many people would get to to hear a message that's filled with life filled with the gospel filled with truth and we can just keep sharing that around and so I'm thankful for that also if you want to leave a comment or you want to reach out to us you can reach out to us at alivechurchnyc.com and you can see that in the, the description below also uh, for those of you who are, are giving today, I uh, want to give you an opportunity to, to give. If you want to give a one-time donation, if you want to tithe, if you want to give an offering, then um, you can give at alivechurchnyc.com slash give. You know, God is such a, a giver himself. He gave his son to die for us. He gives us courage. He gives us strength. He gives us life. And so our response to him is just to respond with the heart of gratitude and giving back to him. And, you know, there, there is such a promise with putting him first in our finances. If we put him first, especially in that first 10%, which is the tithe, and he's always coming through. He's always uh, allowing us to do more with that 90% than we could have done with the 100% on our own. So I encourage you, continue to tithe, continue to give. Don't lose heart when it comes to finances because God will go before you and I believe he will reward the work of your hands, especially as you put him first. Money is connected to us, whether we like it or not. 
it's a it's a reflection of where our heart is at and so where our treasure is there our heart will be also and so i always choose to put god first and so that my heart will be into all that he wants to do and so i encourage you in that today too so you can give at alivechurchnyc.com give if you'd like to follow us on our social media platforms you can see those down in the description below as well but with all that being said just want to encourage you to enjoy this weekend ask the lord to build courage in you and don't be uh, dismayed when opposition comes your way and when you feel outnumbered or when you feel like you you don't have what it takes for a certain project or task in front of you or when you have new responsibilities come your way do not be afraid do not be discouraged but take heart and and lean into the lord like never before amen amen well god bless you have a great rest of your memorial day sunday and we will see you next sunday